Hello everyone and thanks for tuning into February's Opinion Poll Tracker video from the Gavin Partridge YouTube channel. So here we go again, it's time to bring you another uh, tracker video. We're looking at the prediction from Electoral Calculus for the next UK general election um, based on opinion polls that were conducted during January. And then we'll have a look at those polls in depth that that prediction is based upon. We'll uh, bring up to date with how uh, government approval is going as well. It's all building up to the uh, next UK general election, which we think are going to be at some point this year. Can't be any later than January 2025. Realistically, it's probably going to be either the spring, the summer, or the autumn. And uh, and so, yes, uh, we'll bring you the latest prediction from Electoral Calculus in a moment. Just say that if you're enjoying our vlogs and videos on the channel at the moment, please can you like, share and subscribe and thank you so much everybody for uh, doing that. Right, okay, so all that said, let's move ourselves over to Electoral Characters and have a look at their latest prediction for the uh, next general election. So in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, BOOM! There we go. And uh, the latest prediction is for a Labour record landslide majority of 256 seats. That is up 82 on their prediction uh, in January, but based on December's opinion polls. This prediction based on January's opinion polls, of course. Right, OK, so let's start drilling down into the detail then. And I say the central current prediction is for a Labour majority of 256. That would be way above what they achieved in the 1997 and 2001 landslides. And this is how that prediction is worked out. So Conservatives on, 20, on a projecting 24.7% of the vote, basically 25% of the vote. Labour nearly 20 points ahead on 44 0.2% of the vote. Liberal Democrats on 9.8. Reform on 10.4. Uh, we've got both Reform and Liberal Democrats on 9%, but uh, Reform slightly ahead. We've got Greens on a projected vote of 6%. SNP on 3.4% of the vote. Projected again, uh, point. 8% uh, ahead for 0.8% for Plaid and others on 4%. And that gives Labour a central seat prediction of 453 seats. The Conservatives are on a central prediction of just 126 seats. That would be a catastrophic result for the Conservatives way under uh, the, uh, the the terrible result they have in uh, 1997. Um, and got uh, Liberal Democrats on 31%, on um, 31 seats, I should say, central prediction. Despite being on 10.4%, reform are projected to have no seats with this um, central prediction. And the Greens, just two uh, seats there. SNP, 18 seats, uh, which is way down on the 48 they had in 2019. That would be a terrible result for the SNP as well. And Plaid uh, on uh, on two seats there. There's a margin of error, of course, within the uh, pr prediction and the projection. So at the high end, the, uh, the Labour Party could go to 540 seats, virtually wipe out for all other parties. At the low end, on 330, 330, note that this month takes them above the 326 they would need to form an overall majority. So even on their very lowest uh, um, margin of error, uh, on their lowest seat show of margin of error, even with that, they are still getting above 326 uh, that they need to form an overall majority. Conservatives could go as low as 44 seats um, within the margin of error. Obviously, that would be total oblivion. And they could hold on to 244 at the at the high end of the of the uh, margin for error, which a given you know thing that's gone on over the past few years probably wouldn't be too bad for them. Um, uh, Liberal Democrats could be at the low end on just 13 seats, but at the high end they could get 55 seats. Um, so note that the Liberal Democrats at their high end are above the Conservatives at their lowest end. That would lead to the Liberal Democrats 
becoming the uh, official opposition to the Labour government. Reform could get nine seats at the high end on this uh, projection. Uh, and uh, Greens could go uh, up to three seats on the projection at the low end. They could lose uh, their two uh, projected two seats. SNP might hang on to 39 seats at their highest end, but they could go as low as six seats. That would be a very bad result for them. And, uh, of course, again, we have applied. Could go as high as four seats or as low as one seat. So, central prediction of a record Labour majority of 256. And these are the opinion polls that uh, that. that uh, that prediction and projection is based upon uh, all of them through the month of January starting off with the very first which was YouGov from the 2nd to the 3rd of January gave uh, Labour 24% uh, lead so Conservatives were on 22% Labour on 48% I think that is so um, massive massive lead there uh, for uh, Labour other huge leads that we see for Labour during January we have people polling just here on the 25th of January giving Labour a 25% lead so uh, uh, Conservatives were 20% on that poll Labour on um, 45% there uh, we also have Ipsos Ipsos Murray our oldest pollster they gave Labour a 22% lead so uh, with that poll Labour again were on I think that's 49% Conservatives on 27%. We've got Lord Ashcroft, former Conservative peer. He's become a pollster in recent years. He gives uh, 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 Labour 17% lead, or his poll did, um, with uh, Labour on 44% of the vote. Conservatives on 27% of the uh, projected vote there. Not all um, the polls have a huge uh, Labour lead. So, for example, we have Delta Poll just here with the Conservatives on 29%, rather more healthy position uh, for, for them. Labour on 43%, which gives uh, Labour a, a lead of 14%. That would still be easy enough to form an overall majority government if it came off in the election, but obviously this is significantly uh, lower compared to some of those polls. We've got Opinium just here. They also tend to have uh, lower Labour leads, so um, they gave Labour a 15% lead during during uh, January 40, so you see 42% to Labour, 27% to the Conservatives there. YouGov, 27% uh, lead for uh, Labour. I think that's the biggest lead for Labour during uh, January, although there's also YouGov just here. So, so the two YouGovs there, both giving uh, Labour 27% leads. Labour on 47% of the vote. Conservatives just 20%. Uh, and again, uh, this poll with uh, Labour 47% Conservatives 20%. So two polls from YouGov giving Labour a nearly a 30% lead. Bear in mind, this is an election year, so you would be starting to expect the polls to begin to narrow a little bit and a swing back start to occur to the government, typically. Um, but so far, certainly with Yuga, <laughs> certainly with Yuga, there's absolutely no sign of that. The Conservatives remain in an absolutely dreadful, uh, dreadful, dreadful situation. Um, we have got more in common just here giving Labour a 15% lead. So, uh, Conservatives on 42%, Labour on... Uh, uh, Labour on 42%, I should say. Conservatives on 27%. And we've got Savanta, formerly Comrades, with a 17% Labour lead. That's pretty high for Savanta. They tend to be at the lower end of the range. So, um, they have uh, Labour 44%, Conservatives uh, just uh, 27%, I think. Um, with that one. And also, we've got another Savannah just here, Labour, 43%, Conservatives, 29%, slightly better for Conservatives, that one, a 14% Labour lead. Redfield Wilton, giving Labour a 23% lead, massive, massive lead with that one, 45% Labour, 22% Conservatives. So, on a lot of these polls, well, on all the polls with Conservatives in the 20s, a lot of these polls have the Conservatives as low 
as the low 20s. Some of them have them in the mid or the upper 20s, but from like from a conservative point of view, I think given we are in election year, um, you know, there will be a lot of very anxious conservative MPs and party campaigners and members and whatnot that are looking at these polls and, you know, becoming really quite worried that, that we're still seeing polls giving conservatives like 20%, 23%, 22%, 23%, 20%, you know, uh, really, 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 really bad situation for the, for the Conservatives to be in, in, as I keep saying, in an election year. So this is how the overall opinion poll graph is looking from uh, Wikipedia. Again, we still see this massive Labour lead being maintained. The key point of the part, well, there are two key points of the Parliament. The first key point is when crossover between Conservatives and Labour occurred. That was in the autumn of 2021 during Partygate. And then we see relatively stable and modest but rather unspectacular Labour lead through the first half of 2022. But the, the key period really is in the autumn of 2022 just here where the Conservatives absolutely crater this trust comes Prime Minister of course and has a, a disastrous budget and the Conservatives then crater, they crash into the low 20s. Labour goes soaring off into the stratosphere. Then Rishi comes in, Rishi Sunak comes in and sort of narrows things a little bit, improves the Conservative position slightly. Labour come down a bit, Conservatives go up a bit, but nowhere near enough, and it's been pretty stable ever since, with Labour somewhere in the uh, mid, sometimes upper 40%, occasionally low 40%, but solidly in the, in, in the 40%, and Conservatives just stuck solidly in the low to mid 20%. On a lot of those uh, polls. Notice also we've got reform down here. They've taken off a little bit over the past few months and have more or less reached parity or maybe even slightly crossed over with the uh, Liberal Democrats. So that's another quite important feature given that a lot of the Conservative, um, a lot of the reform uh, share is probably coming from Conservative to reform switchers. So um, that's another relatively significant um, scenario in in the course of this parliament. At the moment, there's no sign of any swing back occurring. Labour looking very, very stable there in the mid-40s. Conservatives going nowhere fast in, in the mid to low 20s. Um, I'm expecting, I still think we probably will have some swing back to the government, so I'm expecting in the end, Conservatives will probably tick up a little bit. Labour will probably come down a little bit. But I think the gap, as I've been saying in the tracking videos over the past few uh, uh, past few months, I think the gap between Conservatives and Labour is just too big for Conservatives to have any any notions about being able to form the government after next session. Uh, after next session, I think it will be a change election with uh, Labour forming the next government. The only question is how how big will Labour uh, Labour's bitchy be? Will it be like a a, a, a landslide? Will it be a, like a, a regular majority, would it be a small majority, or could it could the Conservatives even um, keep Labour to, to a hung parliament? But I think Labour will be forming the government um, after the next election. And uh, then finally, we saw government approval is looking. Maps show no sign of any improvement for the government whatsoever. So uh, once again, we've got 65% disapproving of the government on YouGov's um, government approval tracker. We've got 20% don't know, and we've got 14% approving of the government. Yet again, the uh, number of people approving of the government is under the don't knows. That's always a bad sign when that happens. And, you know, nothing is happening here that will suggest any form of swing back to, uh, to the Conservatives and to the government at the moment. It looks very, very, very solidly in favour of Labour to win the next election, probably with an overall majority um, and, you know, possibly with, uh, uh, with a landslide. So, coming back to electoral calculus, this is their prediction. Labour majority of 256 seats. That would be a record-breaking majority for Labour. And uh, we shall see. 
what the next prediction has to say. That will be coming up in March and will be based on February's uh, opinion polls. If you enjoyed the video, then please you like, share, subscribe, all about yourself. What do you think to happen in the uh, election? When do you think the election will be? Let me know in the comments and we'll have more for you uh, very, very soon. But for February's opinion poll, check a video from this uh, Gavin Parcher's channel. Uh, that's all for now. And thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again with more very soon. And bye for now.